Hey there guys, Ice Nine again doing another video and uh Ron was asking me uh somebody who's been following me here on YouTube uh was asking me about the legacy events and what they entail. So I explained it a little bit, but I figured I'd play one and so you could see and mixed feelings about this for legacy because as we know EA takes away your team every year. Okay, so every single year, your team is going to get reset. In August, when the game resets and the new version comes out, you lose your team. And the only thing you could really do is look at it in the trophy case, so sit there and admire it, uh, all your hard work throughout the year. You know, in my case, you know, working really hard to, to try to do these things hours and hours and probably hundreds of hours of work to build a team like that. So in a way, playing this one live event once a week is kind of a, a kick in the balls. But in another way, it's a good that EA does something. And I do think that by resetting the game every year and forcing you to build a team, more or less everybody's on an equal playing field. I will say that last year, too, that there were achievements and, and whatnot that you could get just for being active and doing different things, whatever. For one day, it might be running 300 yards and you get points and you get points towards packs, towards uh, players that you could get a head start for next year. You get them when when you start out the game in the next year. And so I am appreciative of that, and I do understand, too, that if you just kept the same team and you didn't have to switch in a way, it would be kind of stale in a way. Part of the fun is trying to build a team and struggling with a bronze and a silver and a gold team at the beginning of the year. But the legacy events are just a way, just acknowledging that, you know, something that you could get some extra coins and maybe some pulls doing. Part of the problem with it, though, in typical EA fashion, is only one guy in my league has ever gotten anything good from the event that I know of. You know, you got a flashback. But otherwise, the chances are so slim that it's ridiculous. All right, so here we are running with Barry Sanders again, who isn't even in the game this year. Nice little agility truck. Another agility truck. And, uh, yeah, I wish I had this guy right now. He's definitely better than CJ2K. Ron was saying, how could anybody... Ooh, I went out of bounds. Ron was saying, how could anybody be better than CJ2K while you just watch and the, some of the players that come out? Oh, shit. <laughs> All right. And, okay. The really slow agility truck. And there we go. He's just blistering speed. Once I made that corner the right way, I got it. So, it's actually a 1,000 coins and a 500 points experience. Which isn't too bad. But, the actual reward pack, though. There you go, I get a silver player, and that is very typical of what I get in those situations. So anyways, that is the Legacy event. We still got Combine going going on. It's tough. Uh, one Stamina Saturday was really the most economical way of doing that and getting Combine players. Now the event is kind of petering out a little bit will do because the economy is changing so quickly let us check out these combine players in the auction house and then you know what we're going to do something we're going to look for uh different players in the auction house and kind of see what they are going for to see how things are affected but here we go it seems like some of the players are definitely more expensive than what i saw last night um, let's narrow it down to 500k again. 
and see who's available. So Vernon Davis is a good player. Mariota is a good player. Davis, in some ways, might be better than Gronk. He's faster. He's faster. He's strong. You know, the blocking stats are pretty good. I heard the route running and catch in traffic, the stats aren't very good, but otherwise, pretty good. Mariota's here. Mariota's going pretty cheap. And I almost want to try him, but I know he'd lower my overall. You know, so it's not all about overall, but it's certainly somewhat important. I've got, you know, Elway in there with a the double boost. Otherwise, I'd like to try that player. For sure, mobile quarterback. It is fun playing with the mobile quarterback, that's for sure. But, yep, for combine, it's kind of petering out. Let's see, though, what else. Let's look for given things, though, okay? So, let's look for flashback Gurley, and I haven't looked this up beforehand, but I want to see how this is affected. You know, Gurley has risen from, I, I got him around Christmas time, and I picked him up for one, 1 1.2 million coins, somewhere in that range. And then that's about where the inflation kicked in, and it affected everything. There were just too many coins in the game. And then Gurley has gotten up to about 5 million coins. Now, I haven't sold Gurley because, you know, I was always kind of thinking, well, if if I do get rid of CJ2K and cash out of that and decide that's not the way I want to go, then I'll still have a speed booster. But I want to see what he's going for now. And he's still going for a lot, 5 million plus coins. This is a player that hasn't really been affected as much by uh, the market correction, if you want to call it that, as a yet. Coins being out of the game. So there's one player that has not been affected. Let's check out some other players here. Let's check out Dion with those great boosts. So 3 million coins, but just not really moving. It seems like the, the market has really... Kind of settled down. Who else can we check for? Let's check for Marshall. And the 2 million coin range. Run the Super Bowl when, when this was going on. And, and Pro Bowl. I remember him going in the low 1 million range. Even a little bit less when those pro sets. When those uh, all pro sets, the Pro Bowl sets were out there. So that's kind of interesting. And then um, let's check on Favre. Man, pricing on that with the great double boost 1.2. Yeah, so that's not too bad. 1.2 and sitting, like I said. Besides the deep ball, which does has it pl has its place, and you could definitely play to Favre's strengths, but um, I think his release is kind of slow, and I just don't like the way he plays as much as Elway or Brady. I still like the way Brady plays a little bit more than Elway, I think, by the way. But while we're talking about it, let's look at Brady. And see what he's going for. So this player right here is going for under a million coins. I checked him last night, but I just wanted to see. And a lot of people went for, man, 670K. 650 he just sold. That's, guys, that's absolutely a steal. And I know a lot of people like the mobile quarterbacks. You know, some of them can actually play pretty well with them too. But... Having a guy who could really throw accurate passes, especially in the short and the mids, and has a boost and is a 99 for 650K, that's amazing. So if you don't mind standing in the pocket, if you don't run with the quarterback a lot, that's a great player. It really is a great player. And all right, let's see what else we could look for here. 
you know what, let's look at something completely different now. And we're going to see gold players for 2,500 coins. That is kind of a threshold for me when I was doing uh, the road set, when I was doing the, uh, the MVP sets. So getting gold players for those sets and then getting gold players to put into 10 trophy packs. 2,500 is kind of a cutoff to where it becomes you could do it and get players and still make it somewhat profitable and economical. So let's check this out. All right, sold, 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 and sold. And wow, look at this. So people buying up gold players, maybe stocking up for positional heroes. And also, the thing to keep in mind with this, too, yeah. Well, I mean, there's a lot of them on the market, but they are all, they're insta selling now. Golds are at 2,500 coins. Not insta selling, but uh, there's certainly a few, and those will sell up quickly, too, I'm sure, as people go through. People are stocking up on these golds for positional heroes. And then keep in mind there is another new set that is using Elite Trophies now. We got Trophy Monster 3. So not being a trophy event in the game anymore. Uh, last year there was an event where you could pull Elite Trophies from it. you know, And they stopped doing that. So basically the only way you could get trophies really is by you know putting bronzes into silvers, into golds, and then Elites. Very inefficient, very wasteful. Or you could do 10 trophy packs out of gold players that you could get. So say for 2.5 or 25,000 uh, coins, you get 10 of these guys. And then you get 10 trophies out of it. If you get at least one elite, maybe a couple golds, you made your coins back. You did, you did okay. So it's a good way to build the Trophy Monster 3, and I think that's why we see gold selling pretty quickly now. And there do seem to be a lot out in the market here on, on Sunday. Up, oh, it froze. So there, there do seem to be a fair amount of them out there, but they are going. So a couple things are propelling that, that low-end market on the golds now. You know, the one is, of course, the Trophy Monster 3. And then also positional heroes that people say, you know, I need an offensive guard. So they're going out and getting gold offensive guards and trying to stock up towards the positional hero where that eventually comes out. And then, of course, the trophy monster. The other thing that affects that, of course, is how many of them are out in the marketplace with what is being done with the coin sellers being shut off and coins being taken out of the game. That means that the low-end market is affected, too, because people don't have virtually unlimited point, coins to rip through packs, which means that there's less gold players and kind of the junk of packs, so to speak, out there in the market, which drives, down, drives up the low end of those items. So that's kind of a cool thing in a way, too. So, another thing I guess we could check, too. You know, let's see what bronze players are selling for. And, you know, it's like, wow, who cares, right? Who cares about bronze players? And I'm sure this isn't affected right now. But one thing I want you guys to keep in mind. Yeah, bronze is going for 250 minus 250. Is that they did have a silver trophy master that came out about this time last year i don't know if he is going to do the same thing or maybe like positional heroes they're doing it a little later i do think that they were great programs for ea to do and i hope they do them again but to remind everybody silver trophy master cam chancellor needed i believe it was 50 bronze players from every single nfl team 
So it was 32 teams, 50 bronze players, as I, as I thought the number. It was 50 or 75. And then I believe it was 25 silver players from any, every NFL team. And I think it was something like 50 bronze trophies and 25 silver trophies. So instead of just up converting those silver trophies to um, elites or golds or whatever you need for positional heroes, it might be wise to save, well, you'd have to save a lot to really make it worth anything to you, but you got to keep in mind that something like that might be coming out. Let's check out a couple other cards here. Let's see what Chris Johnson is selling for now with all these coins taken out of the game. So there's two out there, and there's one with a buy it now of around what I bought him for. I bought him for $80 million, you know, but that was pretty much a snipe at the time. You know, now it's coming down. There's somebody with 99 million coins, but then there's an auction finishing right here for $78 million, and it doesn't, doesn't have anything on it. It's good news for people. Now let's check out Vic. And see what he's going for. 99 Mike Fix. So there's one out there. One and only one. Going for just under 100 million coins. And you know I mean this is right here. That's the best boost in the game. It's hard to imagine a better booster coming out all year long. But in terms of a throwing quarterback. You know he's not particularly tall. And the throw power and accuracies are decent, but not great. There are better players that are going to come out from a gameplay point of view. But if when it comes to running with the quarterback in boosts and for overall, I mean, that's definitely an end game player. But that is kind of amazing, though. So let's play a little head to head here. Still got all kinds of games to play. And Mile High Magic down 8-3. to three. And he's mixing it up in there. And 30% is a pretty good possibility. And that 30 and 34%. So that probably means 2. I'm probably facing a soft unit here. Kind of like what I run. I'm looking at uh, my ultimate freeze game plan here. Yeah, so 34% against the run. So, got to have some luck with this, with the soft counter unit. And let's kind of see how I do playing it. And that means he's got three long... And play action collectibles. Unless he mixed it up. Which is a possibility as well. But what I'm going to do. I'm going to kind of go after it. And see how that works. And we can see right there how that worked. 38%. So. Caught on the very first time. And that was the problem with doing a drive like this. Now I'm kind of in a hole. And I got to try to work my way out of it. And Gronk breaks a tackle. And definitely gets me out of it in that situation. Let's try strong cross. Looks like I'm going to get a good look right there. And we're going to go back to that flipped spread FL drag. We're getting the counter look. It's a critical. And you can see those percentages really getting up there. Okay, so with this being the case in this situation with soft counters, let's try the Y stick. All right, Gronk. 
I'm going to go for the tie here. Gronk definitely looked good on that drive for sure. That's one of the things when I'm going against a, a soft unit. A lot of times I'm so used to not running Y stick now that I just forget it's there. But it's such a good play. Really is. All right, let's see what's going on here. An obtuse reality, another really good player. I believe we've played a couple times. All right, and then, yeah, so the screen, CJ2K, that's right. You got picked in 30 and 34%. There he goes, keeping the drive going. 10 to 7. Man, let's see what I could do. 30%. And once again, I think that corresponds to a soft counter unit. There's some value to knowing those numbers and memorizing them. And there are some variables in there, but... Yeah, there's definitely a value to that. All right, and that was the medium <clears throat> soft counter. And it means our chances of getting one on a run play are higher. Uh, flipped spread FL drag. Man, just to kind of verify something, although it's not exactly the time to check it out in a drive. That's a counter. And 30%, so that's only, that's a soft unit. Right there is what that looks like. And this one works even when it's countered. And it was not countered there. I'm going to go after it a little bit. That looks like a counter. Yep, 38%. I had to kind of lob it over there and I'll way through a pretty good pass given the situation I'm going to Sherman. Because that was the counter look. And then here on slants, we're going to play it kind of safe. Because that one, as you can see, works when it's countered. Get to the 10-yard line. I don't know if I'm up for that challenge. But I will try strong PAFL middle. And, uh, that one ends up working. Uncountered. Even countered, it's a very hard play. It just seems like unless you get a critical and you sack the quarterback, that tight end tends to get open. All right, so we're not going to make this too long today. I've got a bunch more to play a medium challenge. Ah, and I actually get a headliners, not the headliners are discontinued. I wish they had kept that going. I know it was a weekly thing, but it was kind of a cool promo. I definitely miss it. And we get a fullback, which I could use for positional heroes. Which, you know, if you're looking at it now mapping out my team, you know, and figuring out who I'll go for. For positional heroes and, you know, those weeks that I'll try to just sell players and make money because I've got a lot of elites and I've got elite fullbacks too. And it looks like at the fullback, you know, I don't know if there's going to be really a better player than this. You know, he's got a boost. Um, I'm pretty happy with the way he plays, by the way. Sherman's pretty good. 
Actually, there's one player we could check before we end the video here. Let's check and see what Sherman's going for at the auction house. And then just check out, I guess, combine players in general. The combine boss players, so to speak. So 6.5. You know, there are people who are cashing out. I got them just under 7 million coins. So there you go. For 6 million coins, you could get uh, the combine fullback. And the thing is, yeah, it's a fullback. Who cares? The blocking, you know, I hear a lot of different things. I hear some people say the blocking doesn't matter at all. In All Madden and Hall of Fame, I definitely agree. The blocking does not matter one iota. You know, guys just do not seem to block too well in the Hall of Fame. But I will say in league drives, running a fullback is nice. Uh, they definitely block better in in league and pro settings so from that point of view having a sherman card like this would be a good thing it's six million coins right now coins being worth what they're worth uh i don't know if he's worth picking up right now but he might come down a little bit and in any case should be better than the positional heroes here while we're at it like like i said my videos are you know i don't I don't script him, obviously. You know, I try to have some kind of plan on what I want to cover when I come in, but I just kind of do what I want to do with my videos. All right, so some of the players, so there's CJ2K, that one going under 80 million. Then there's Shazier for under 30 million. There's Cooks for in the low... 20 million range and then Rhodes under at 14 and the thing is with Cooks the problem is and the stats are excellent acceleration boost is really good even though there have been a lot of them in the game you know it's a 99 player with a plus 2 acceleration boost uh, that's kind of a big deal and he's really fast and really strong and all the stats are really really good the carry is good but he's not very tall. And so even though he's kind of an elusive back, he, this would be like the perfect uh, wide receiver to run. Head back, what am I talking about? The perfect wide receiver to run if he had like a screen passes in the game. They don't have flanker screen this year. So, you know, you can't use him. That would have been the best play to use this guy at. Otherwise, you know, FL drag. You know, the crossing routes, slants, things like that, where his height aren't much of a factor, then, you know, he's probably really, really good because he's just really fast, really strong, really quick, and really elusive. But in the deep ball, you know, what the space that Julio owns, he, he's probably not as good. All right, and Chase here is just coming down here, and yeah, there's a lot of Shermans. There's one Kelsey, and you know, not moving now at 44 million coins. And once again, you know, if they really did dry up all those coin sellers, that means that players like that, you know, like this Sherman Carter, Shazier, or like Kelsey here, who I'd like to have. You know, that's that's a guy who could make somebody's team for the end of the year. Look at all the green over Hudson. Yeah, his pass blocking's not great, but centers, you know, a lot of times they get double teams. It doesn't matter as much, and he's really fast. So this is a player I'd like to have. It's just way too many coins. You know, you got to pick and choose. Under... And there's no such thing as normal conditions, I guess you could say, because the economy goes up and down. But say this time last year, just as a comparison, which last year, this time is a little bit after that is when the GTs started coming out and things like that. And the GTs were typically selling like day one. I bought Dion for seven million coins. And, you know, his stats, just to remind everybody of how sick players can get in this game. 
and how you think, oh, that's going to be the best player for the for the rest of the year. And then you look at that card, you know, it's just unbelievable. It's like, you know, how, how can stats be that high? It's absolutely insane. Well, with golden tickets, it's because a fan is making up the stats to a certain extent. So, you know, we got some players to come out. You know, we probably have, for those of us who think we have it made, you know, at a 102 overall, you know, if it's like your first year and you get a 102 overall and you're like, damn, I'm awesome. This is going to be all set for the rest of the year. No, there are going to be better players that are coming out. But there, it is cool to kind of see that there's potentially a couple players that could be on my team for the rest of the year that I'm not going to have to worry about. First one I could think of is right there. You know, linemen being you know, may or may not block anyways, depending on the difficulty level. I really don't see a better guard coming out than Zach Martin. I could see somebody with some boosts and things like that, but in terms of just a better overall player at the position, I don't know if it's going to happen. Um, I, I do think that Sherman, there's a good chance they'll make my legacy team. Of course, it, it really is going to depend on who comes out, though, because... One thing that could really happen is better running backs than CJ2K are going to come out. And while I think he's fine in my team right now, I could see better players coming out that I would want. And then using CJ2K kind of like you would use a girly and putting him at fullback and then putting that marquee running back out there. Then the defensive end... Uh, Players I could see being legacy. Um, I could see Von Miller being the legacy player because he's 99 with the double boost, and one of them is Acceleration, which is one of the better ones. Peters, I don't know. I think better corners are going to come out faster, but he's pretty fast. He's very strong, and he plays really well. So... He could end up being making my legacy team. Somehow I don't think so, though, if I had to guess. Uh, all around, you know, the, the defensive line here. I mean, White, I think, could make it. Because, once again, a 99 with a double boost. But I think he'll eventually be stuck in that flex position. And then, you know, as a better defensive tackles come out. You know, and that is about it. I think everybody else, by the end of the year, is not going to be on this team. I really do think so. Just knowing what I know about how how the game has worked the last two years. Definite improvements that I would like to make. I would like to get better defensive ends. Both of them still got Howie Long here, and he's been pretty good. And especially with the number of boosts that he has. And then Beasley here is good. But I think that, you know, with the better tackles coming out in the game, I see him getting wiped out a lot. I really do. Especially on the lower levels. At all Madden and Hall of Fame, he gets in the backfield in a hurry, that's for sure. But in league play, he's just, you know, he's just not as strong as some of the other defensive ends that are out there so there's going to be better guys coming out but that is it guys uh, that's basically what i wanted to cover and thanks for watching